going on guys? So a lot of y'all know that I love putting really cool camera shots in my videos, specifically my product reviews and my first rides. And if you notice behind me, I've got a helmet that might seem a little familiar. A couple years ago, I made a video about Rurock, this company Rurock making this Atlas helmet. That is the Atlas Ronin. It's now a real thing. Two years later after making that little moto vlog, and the guys from Rurock actually flew to the US to hand deliver me that Ronin Atlas, which is absolutely phenomenal. So with those guys being in town, I figured, hey, why not get them to film me and do what I do getting product shots of this helmet? And that way I can kind of take you guys behind the scenes and show you guys what I actually do to make a product uh, review or a first ride. We're gonna be focusing on a product review this time because we're gonna be doing the shots of the Atlas Ronin behind me. I think it's gonna be a pretty cool video and I'm sure a lot of you guys have been interested in like, how do I do the stuff? Well today, you're gonna find out. Whoa. We're not gonna continue this until you hit the like button because if you're getting all my camera secrets, you can at least, li you can at least like the video. Oh, you liked it, thanks. All right, we'll, we'll keep it going now. Okay, let's go. All right, so to get this whole process started, the first step is getting close-up shots of the helmet. I almost always do these in the garage, but it does take some rearranging to get that set up. Typically, I move all the bikes out so I have plenty of space to work with, and I get all these bright lights turned off. With all the main lights off, I'm able to bring my one light in so I can get a more specific look on the product. So if you guys watch a lot of my product reviews, you have most definitely seen our little rolling table. The tabletop is beat to hell, it has a grinder and a vise on it, and I love using that for product reviews for two reasons. One, it's on wheels, so I can determine what background I want for the product very easily and I can roll it around the garage. Two, it's got two really cool textures that I love a lot. The tabletop that is burnt and beat to hell, and then I also have the vise that's like this cool metal texture, and depending on the product I'm reviewing, I'll use one of those two textures or maybe something else in the garage, but I love that table for placing the product on. After that's prepped up, it's time to decide what angle I want to film the product from. This is gonna determine what's in the background of the video. Typically, I really like using the TV or the workbench because the Philips Hue lights back there can really brighten up and can be whatever color I want them to be. So I typically change them depending on what the product is. So for the Ronin Atlas, we've got a black helmet with gold pinstriping and stuff like that. So I feel like a background being like a yellow or a gold would kind of be the best. So that's what we're gonna go with for this one. All right, so next up we got that set up. So now we gotta set up the camera. So I'm gonna be focusing on the support gear, which is what allows me to get the sliding shots that are super slow that I get a lot of questions about. I'm not really gonna focus on the camera or the lens we use because that changes over time and that will make this video not really relevant and the camera doesn't really matter that much anyway. All right, so what do I use to get these super slow shots of products? That is a motorized slider. A slider is basically this item that moves the camera back and forth, and if it's motorized, the motor is what's moving the camera back and forth. This is the only way you can get consistently very slow shots of a product. I use this on first rides, and I use this on product reviews. I used to do it by hand, but by hand is not consistent enough to always get the exact same shot you're looking for. The one I personally use is an Edelkrone slider. I've had it for multiple years now. It's worked really good. It's a little clunky with the motorized part, but it's been working for a while and it works great for getting really close up product shots and having a very consistent move. I actually love these like little slider moves and I use them, I probably use them too much. But hey, if it looks good, it works. So to use the slider, I just mount it on top of a tripod and then I mount the camera on top of it, set the slide up and just have the camera move back and forth. And I don't even have to touch the camera other than tapping that joystick to get the camera move started. So when it comes to what shots I need to get, I typically use my review as the guide for what I need to get. 
My goal is for the shot that you see in the final video be exactly what I'm talking about. So in this review, I'm of course gonna be mentioning the graphics on the helmet. So the first thing that comes into my mind with this helmet is, okay, so we're gonna need one main shot of the entire helmet with a slider going towards the helmet. Then we're gonna need at least two to three close-up shots of certain parts of graphics that I think look really cool and I want to stand out in the video. It is important to note that once the lighting and the product is set up, it's not going to stay there for the entire video. The lighting that I need for showing off the entire helmet is going to be entirely different than if I needed to get a close up on one of the vents or something like that. So when I move a shot, most of the time I'm moving my lighting to make sure the shot looks exactly like I want. But it really helps that my light is on wheels just like the table, so both of those things can be moved extremely easily. So once all this stuff comes together, you eventually get beauty shots of products like these. As you guys can see, this is not really a quick setup. Most of the time when I'm doing product shots, I'm here in a dark garage with my light and my products. I've got headphones on, I just crank music, and it'll take hours to get all the shots that I need just for one product review. All right, so now for more of the fun part, even though I really enjoy doing product shots, but that is actually using the product. I think it's very important to have product shots so you guys can really see the product and all the little details of it, but I also feel like it's super important for you guys to see me using the product. Since we're talking about a helmet, we're obviously talking about going out and riding with the helmet on. Now, obviously there's setting up GoPros on your bike to see the helmet, but you guys know that I like to take it up a little more than that, so, that's gonna bring us to the infamous follow car shots. So guys, I'm gonna have to breeze over the follow car stuff pretty quickly for this video so we can put it all in here, but just know I'm highly considering doing more follow car videos and content here on the channel moving forward. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments. Legit, I could talk about this stuff forever, but we're gonna be super concise today. So the follow car setup has gotten pretty crazy over the years. As of right now, what we do is rig up my Jeep Compass with rails. That's what these little silver things are if you've ever seen photos of my Jeep. So to set the rails up on the Jeep, we use two of the roof rack setups to hold two rails, and then the back rail is used on the trailer hitch, and that makes this triangular cage situation. And what we use all of those rails for is to attach our stabilizer to the Jeep. So this giant black thing is called a black arm, and it's basically there to soak up all the extra shakes and bumps that get translated from the car to the camera. You guys would be shocked at how terrible your footage can look if you don't have one of these. So the final part of our stabilization is the gimbal. We're just using a small little Ronin S. I really need a bigger gimbal, but those things get so expensive so quickly. So we're trying to make the Ronin S work for our rig currently. And what this does is keep the camera at horizon, regardless of how much swinging it does on that black arm. This also allows us to move the camera if we want to. Now typically when we do first rides, my wife Heather drives the Jeep and I'm riding the motorcycle, obviously. So we don't have a third person to control the camera, but now that the Rural Art guys are in town, we can actually take advantage of them and move the camera around and it allows us to get so many more shots in such a small period of time. Instead of having to pull over, move the camera, and then get back on the road, there can be a guy in the back of the Jeep controlling the camera and moving it around. It makes it really cool. I also need, I need a third person on first rides because it is so efficient. But since the Rural Art guys are in town, we can do fun camera moves like this. So follow car shots are something I've become extremely passionate about very quickly and we've got a long way to go before we really perfect it if you can ever get to that point. But regardless, as far as where we are right now, these are some of the shots we can get with the follow car setup that we currently have.
And guys, that's how we get two of the main types of shots we use for product reviews here on the channel. Let me know in the comments if you guys are surprised by everything that goes on behind the camera or if you kind of expected like that's what we typically go down. And hopefully this sheds some light on, you know, what happens behind the camera that you guys don't typically get to see. Big shout out to the guys over at Rurock. One, for freaking hand delivering an Atlas Ronin to me. And two, for helping out with the shoot. We all had a phenomenal time and it was amazing getting to work with those guys. I love being around creative people. You just like feed off of this like creative energy. But a uh, big shout out to the Rurok guys. If you guys want to check out the uh, Atlas Ronin, it is a solid helmet. I actually don't think you can get any more Ronins. Like they're sold out. But these guys, let me just go ahead and tell you, they're about to make some big moves in the helmet game. We'll talk about that later. If you guys are excited for that review, don't worry, it's coming. It'll probably be out in a couple weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button for behind the scenes camera stuff, or if you just like the Ronin helmet. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. I appreciate you guys watching to the end of this video, and I will see you on the next one. Later. All right, Outro Crew, that's all my camera secrets. Let me know what was the coolest thing you found out in this video in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one when I roll past my microphone and sound terrible. 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 Can I eat the helmet? Can I eat the helmet over there? Like, like this, I need to be quick.